Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be looking at the stablecoin supply ratio. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. On a bit of a time schedule, so I'm gonna to try to get through this as quickly as I can. This is a metric we've talked about a few times. You have uh, the stablecoin supply ratio, which is equivalent to Bitcoin's market cap divided by the stablecoin market cap. It can be interpreted as the ratio of Bitcoin supply and the stablecoin supply denoted in Bitcoin. Its motivation is to quantify the extent of stablecoin buying power and estimate its potential to move the price of Bitcoin. So um, when it gets up to fairly ele elevated levels and the ability for the stablecoin market to move, the price of Bitcoin goes down and diminishes. And I want to take a closer look at that. The reason why is because we've talked about this ratio, um, the, the oscillator, a few times. And we noted that this high here in 2019 also, or sorry, this high in 2019 was the same level that we reached here in 2023. The reason we're making that comparison is because it is the pre-halving year. Note, though, that in 2019, this did not mark the top of the rally. We, in fact, got a, another rally where the stablecoin supply ratio just put in a lower high. In 2023, this did not mark the end of the rally, as we know that Bitcoin went on to go higher in mid-April. At this point, we are close to the prior highs again, whereas the stablecoin supply ratio oscillator is much lower. Now, back over here, you can see that when the, when the SSRO bounced from around these levels, it ended up putting in a slightly lower high. So that's one thing to look at. Um, but you might also look at 2021 and say, well, you know, there's examples over here where it was a slightly lower high, but there's examples over here where it bounced from a similar level as it is right now. And it was a slightly higher high, only slightly, right? It, it didn't lead to a crazy new rally, uh, you know, that was like another 100% move or anything in the short term, but it did lead to say a marginally um, higher high, right? Only a slightly higher high. So in 2019, it was a lower high, in 2021, it was a slightly higher high. In both cases, the market did, you know, eight or nine months later, eventually find some lower prices than where it was right then. But I did want to at least point this out. I know it can be difficult. It can be easy to get sucked into the market when the market moves relatively quickly. But I thought that it would be prudent to provide at least a brief update on the SSRO since it has played out, um, you know, in, in a somewhat similar way as it has uh, in the past. And again, you can see here that we bounced off of it one time uh, when this reached around 0.67 and now has done so again at a slightly lower level around 0.5. In 2021, we bounced off of, um, you know, about 0.63 and then about 0.5 as well. And then finally off of about 0.3 or 0.4 before ultimately we got into May and ultimately the bottom fell out. And, and in, um, in 2019, we know that the Bitcoin rally, of course, lasted until basically the last week of June. And we ended up getting more or less a double top in July, although it did mark a lower high on the SSRO. So just I think this is an indicator not to tell you exactly what's going to happen in the market. Of course, no indicator can, but it can at least provide some perspective on likely outcomes moving forward. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.